Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're going to go into yet another mission on our Saving the Deep Disaster campaign, which is called Dark Event Massacre. We've managed to get 20 Dark Events permanently running for us. Uh, that in itself is an achievement and the owner of uh, the save game wanted to uh, see us kind of try to uh, work through that mess. We're doing that uh, bit by bit. Next step in uh, order to do that is getting a colonel specialist uh, called Tracy Elliott uh, on board. Um, she as a reward will hopefully uh, help us to fill our roster. We are up against the Codex Prime or multiples uh, thereof and a lot of heavy anti-riot uh, max. Automatic defenses is the name of the game for the side trip here. And we got it. Uh, we got a heck uh, workstation that is so fitting for the reward of a specialist. Okay, and given that almost everybody is tired at this point, uh, I slept together whoever was not tired, which is Animal is our uh, specialist. We got the real Hogbite, not uh, fake Hogbite. We got uh, Knuckles as the Ranger, Gravedigger as our Skirmisher. I took one of uh, the uh, Psy Operatives and Duke uh, in order to duke it out uh, with uh, the uh, with the Roberts. So let's get right into it. Of course, we've taken an EMP grenade as well as a few blue screen rounds because we're expecting heavily mechanical units. And off we go. Well, let's land. Not the best team composition to fight only mechanical units, but I think we will still do fine. We do have high level uh, soldiers, so everything should be okay. Our target is over here. We got the high ground and we got a long way to go. So let's start that pro uh, progress. Can we grapple forward? Well, we can grapple different locations, but apparently not forward. As you command. Good, there is Codex Prime and the Codex uh, behind. Uh, Whiplash should deal quite a bit of damage. Nice. Fantastic ability against uh, mechanical targets, by the way. Moving up, hopefully without pulling something. That's a little shredding. Almost tempted to just charge in with a Templar. Can't do that though. 60% chance of hitting it. Yeah, I'm not going to waste lightning uh, hands yet. We will potentially need that in a more difficult encounter. Even if that means we've failed to hit it. But we could always um, just, we can always just use combat protocol, but that's too easy. Alright, Well, that's one of uh, those XCOM moments where everything, every position where you had been standing should have just been safe, but not so much. You thought wrong, my dear. I would like 
like to give over an action to Duke here. <clears throat> We're going to get him off uh, that uh, transporter in a second. What you can do though is fantastically overdrive. And with that, uh, we'll get a few more actions. Got a reposition. <clears throat> into cover and let's kill the prime common protocol would hit either of these guys unfortunate okay that takes care of uh, the guy we still got extra movement available I think we're going to use oh wait domination 31% oh boy now nah. we got to get our Grave Digger uh, back out there. We're going to lose a lot of momentum next turn because I can already foresee that uh, Psionic Bomb is coming. Move down here. You know what? Let's use a Mimic Beacon to counteract that Psionic Bomb, right? Shall we? Over there. And we can put position us uh, right here. That'll be out of range of all of the others. And potentially in Bladestorm range for the Codex that might walk up or shoot. Or of course just teleport like it always does. Uh, immediately it immediately got uh, some feedback can't dominate this but we could theoretically uh, be, uh, dominate the uh, codex prime which would be hilarious if we did that <clears throat> All right, moving to here. Just outside of the bomb. Good chance that we're one-shotting it. Yep, that worked like a charm. Got a placable. Moving up further. I'm on 
you moves up to here. That's a good chance uh, to actually hit it. Common protocol against the super heavy turret also would work incredibly well. <coughs> Let me try to dominate it. If we could actually get it, that would be hilarious. Negative damage. Nope, unfortunately not. To that position. Moving into cover, we don't have our hooks yet and Hence, we got to try to get this uh, guy out of cover. Worked like a charm. Unfortunately, it, it did not stun him. Luckily, though, the guy tried to run away. Which turned out to be a really, really, really bad idea. We got extra movement available. Moving over here. Hawkbite can move closer. Not quite. It's not in range for the turret. I feel bad for him. Yeah, I don't want to waste uh, any more, any more of our cooldowns. The super heavy turret eventually can shoot a couple of uh, our guys, but not too many. So I would just give Grape Digger here full cover, and then that's that. Good chance of taking no damage because uh, the tower might miss another codex prime okay so still the tower is there it'll potentially take one shot if it chooses to... Ah, that's unfortunate. I was about to say, if it chooses to uh, try to hit uh, the Skirmisher, um, I think the Skirmisher even had uh, return fire. Alright, a little bit of healing. Mech moves up. Did we pull anyone else? No, but I should definitely consider that there was uh, an overwatch still going. All right, super heavy turret together with um, common protocol. That should not be a problem. We're stasising the Prime and dealing with it next turn. Orders confirmed. Moving, Moving up. There's yet another turret and a triple uh, pack of Super Heavy Max right behind it. Luckily, haven't engaged those guys yet. Oh, 
Oak bite can move up. Now we don't want to trigger those guys yet. No, 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 no. We're picking up the remaining focus. Is it even worth using lightning hands on the turret if it's if it's not shredded yet? Potentially not. Next turn we can um, put ourselves back up. In the meantime, pull cover. They won't fight no more. Okay, that's not too bad. Ah, Moving further up. We still got combat protocol so that we could hit that turret. We got untouchable here, so if he's the only person that can be seen, that would be fantastic. And just so that we use our actions efficiently, time to hit that tower. Good, and we're ending the turn. There is still a triplet of mechs right over here. Alright, stasis ended. Uh, we still don't have rapid fire. Nonetheless, I believe that trying to hit it with a shotgun is... Still the most efficient uh, way of dealing damage to it. There's a good chance of critting. Won't kill it completely. But 70 points of damage aren't bad. And we get... Bladestorm. It barely... Made its way out of the Bladestorm. This should trigger the other um, triplet of max all right not a surprise not a surprise Where would we position ourselves most favorably? If we were to take combat protocol, yeah, we could actually hit some of them. We gotta deal with the tower and we gotta do that now. So how about, how about Setting Duke up with an 8 protocol. 
that also gives him threat assessment. We're looking at the combat protocol to kill the super heavy turret, just to get rid of uh, that overwatch. Positioning ourselves nicely in the middle. This will hit all three of them. That's the maximum damage that we could take. The Rainmaker even will fall down. And some extra falling damage right there. That's not too bad. What's over there? Barely out of uh, range. Can we get both of these guys together? Trying to maximize the damage here. Void Rift would hold, uh, hit all three, but deal substantially lower amounts of damage. Okay, we'll eventually come back to that in a second. Sometimes these lines oddly shape up to hit just the right amount of, um, of enemies. They don't. Let's hit all three of them. That's still the most damage that we can do. Solid. Um, who could deal the most damage. I think the flame is in a good position to do that. We will fight together. Nine to fourteen, so that's two, four, six, eight. Yeah, that's straight up enough damage to eliminate uh, the mech over here. Okay, well, I want friendly fire. Should have thought about that beforehand. Yeah, that's not good enough. The, uh, the to hit chance. Yeah, by taking cover behind the mech, it's impossible to actually use Null Lens, which is fine. It's a bit of a wasted EMP bomb, to be un uh, honest. We 
We could grapple up, but we might trigger something on the other side. I don't like that. Changing position. The start of the turn was great. Letter ports, not so much. We're potentially going to get one grenade hit and... went straight into the parry. Ooh, wow, okay. They knew we were immune. Uh, only the mech would have been injured. So that's a clever little trick. Hogbite unfortunately took some damage. Good. That will kill one of them and injure the other one. Superior hair trigger is bad. I like it. Unfortunately, there is another turret. Good, moving over here. Let's kill that mech. We triumph. I am almost out of ammunition. Is it clear? I pierce all. That should hit it and deal damage. And damage it dealt. Yeah, let's just kill the super heavy turret. That's a good one. Will the death of this one change anything? No need to ask twice. And our actual hacker <clears throat> moves closer. There are still aliens around though. Potentially another codex pack. Trivial at best. So what are the potential rewards? Delay Stark events, that would be great. Uh, let's actually try to, to get that hack. The delaying of dark events is quite potent. Alright, moving up here. Everybody else just holds their position. Rock and roll. Reload, reload. Watch Overwatch. Reload Overwatch, okay. Menace one five. The Advent Network Terminal is shutting down. This is your last chance to secure the Thanks, Centro. Appreciate uh, your your concerns there. I think we're just going to delay the dark events. We don't need more of them. It's funny to have 20, but if we can help it, we don't need 21. We've got access. We've confirmed successful acquisition of the advent files. Eliminate any remaining hostiles in the area. I'll monitor overwatch, the overwatch, and let's just move over Order here. Reload Overwatch, Overwatch. Okay, 
Okay, back. I needed to take a short uh, toilet break. Uh, let's get hopefully the last pick uh, sorted out. Do we need to wait for our cooldowns is the question. So, we got a little bit of reloading to do here. Uh, whiplash cooldown should be good. Nullens, uh, not yet ready. And we got overdrive. I think that's more or less okay for now. I'd be careful not to trigger anything. Let's move up here. And we could always use the skirmisher in order to pull ourselves up here somehow. Yeah, let's just position ourselves here. It's really difficult. Uh, there's not much map left. And I want to make sure that we're not triggering something in a rush. Okay. Uh, what? I distinctly remember that there was no sectopod on this map. How could that thing have escaped our uh, our shadow chamber? And it's not only a set. Oh, it's a sectopod prime. I hate those things. Now imagine if we had our if we still had our EMP grenade. That would be great, wouldn't it? All right, guardian triggers. Keep on going. That is not good. No, that's not good. But you triggered guardian at least. That's not good. I think. I think what we could do is we could for now just try to um, stasis this guy and then eventually eventually kill him next turn okay not close enough yeah we got to stasis uh, the sector port there's no way around it Good. So in case it's not obvious, we need to overdrive. Fifty-fifty. Does that even kill him? He has four hit points left. Well, that could actually be a kill. What I'm wondering about shouldn't be there shouldn't be much resistance there. We could go in and just use Ion uh, Iconic Storm, right? Right. Let's try that. Why am I jinxing it? I was so sure that there would be any uh, any additional pack. Okay, we gotta find a place where that sector pod can be seen. Well, all of that is uh, quite in the open. It's strange, we can't see him from any of those 
suspicions, but we can see him when we're in the open. Okay, well that is indeed quite suboptimal. So in terms of damage, if we were to go with an Ionic Storm, it's a bit of a problem hitting the Sectopod. Do we have some explos uh, explosives? No, none left. Yeah, I hate to do it, but... I think we gotta do a Ionic Storm uh, very soon, and then afterwards we can follow up. So, that mech uh, will die. This mech is injured. this shot it is in kill range okay I'll need to reload soon. and that heavy mech here is shredded as well a protocol onto hogbite just in case let's hit the mech Okay, good, very good. Now, I hate standing in the open, but if... Oh, wow, the Overwatch was still going. Yeah, okay, my bad. I was about to say I hate standing in the open, but if that's the only way of dealing with the Sectopod Prime, then so be it. Good. Now... If we are trying to hit everyone... Let's see what hit three of them. to three one two one two three I think this here is the best version of it lightning hands to make sure this guy has like what two four six eight no he will die for sure lightning hands up here that'll be another point of damage just to get closer to collapse, uh, to collapsing, and this here I think was uh, the right play. Two kills at least, maybe a third one. Okay, not too bad. Could have done even a bit better, but I think all, all things considered, uh, an okay move. A useful aid. The grapp uh, aggressive grappling forward. I'll keep the whiplash out of it for now. We're looking at eight points of damage. Two, four, six. Yeah, that's a kill. Seventy percent. Can't put ourselves next to it. I do want the whiplash uh, for the sector pot. So 
So do we have anyone who can guarantee to deal damage to the guy upstairs? Yeah, you know, we do. Actually, we do. Hoglite down there could. shortly think through how I would go about it. Hmm. We have a few options here. I want to keep the whiplash because it deals a lot of damage against mechanical units. Second Icarus jump to here, like the rapid fire option. I wonder, shall we keep that for the sector pod as well? Potentially. We're just dealing damage. We still got uh, Blade Storm. Yeah, let's let's do exactly that. Hit the armor. Not completely through. Can't deal. We don't have the cooldowns for our AOE abilities yet, so. I'm afraid it's either a 70% shot, uh, shot or we're going to waste Whiplash, which I would hate to do. Super important cooldown. Hmm. It's 12 points of damage, which is really good. No, I'll take the 70% shot. If push comes to shove, we're taking some damage. Okay, it is what it is. Uh, that means we need to heal next turn. I must have ammunition. Yeah, okay. It's good. Could have been much worse. Believe me, the cooldowns will be more important. That, on the other hand, is bad. I was not expecting so much damage. Okay. Well, that indeed the latter one was pretty bad. Um Let's heal knuckles. I suspect we will need some more healing as this round progresses. Moving into full cover. Let's get a couple of uh, things straight. 9 to 10, and we're looking at what? 4, 6, 8, 9. Well, that should be a kill. It unfortunately also triggered uh, the sector pod. Although, the indicator said it did not. Well, there you go. Reflect. That does not trigger the protocol again, right? But this is absolute bullshit. So we're reflecting just to get it back into our face afterwards. All right. <laughs> this is bad. I mentioned multiple times that I think the um, the way that uh, the protocol is being implemented is utter rubbish. 
and I stand very firm with my assessment there. I believe it could have been implemented much better, like the ruler interactions minus uh, the movement. But this is stupid. I, I have no other way of uh, saying it. It makes no sense. Alright, moving up into full cover. Now Whiplash. I gotta have shredded a bit more. Is there any way of doing exactly that? Moving into full cover here. He has two more shots. And the idea is to let him go out of ammunition. Alright, Whiplash it is. That should now hit into Perry. Yep, there we go. So we got one extra action. over there let's top off hog bites so that he can take one shot one more there's one more shot in this uh, thing and then it should be empty I still hit unfortunately we can't immediately go into parry mode there's the reflect missed it so no an annihilation protocol that's good we're going to parry, and now time for rapid fire. There we go. Five damage, Ooh, nothing to scarp at. I hate face tanking these guys. That's what the um, EMP grenade originally was for. I should have exactly used it for that. But yeah, Hogby took took a beating. <laughs> he reflected a lot, and with the reflection, even took a harder beating. The main problem that I'm seeing with the reflection or with the um, reaction mode is it's supposed to penalize uh, just taking kind of small shots um, at it. At the same time, many of the kind of free actions that are that are actually quite helpful are uh, not dealing a lot of damage. And that's okay because that's how they were designed to be. Two, four, five. We can take the normal heal. So my point is, if you're disincentivizing things like late storm or um, return fire, just basic abilities of XCOM, then I'm wondering what the idea behind it is. Because you want to uh, have counterplay and smart counterplay. What you don't want is uh, to simply like stay here with the Reaper and then uh, take individual shots at the thing until it eventually dies. And maybe I'm the only one uh, seeing a problem in it. But a much better design could be really getting rid of 
uh, getting rid of all of uh, the um, reactions for smaller uh, activities that you're doing, uh, such as um, free actions um, or, uh, or reaction abilities, because that really shouldn't trigger their reaction. Or, alternatively, if you want to make that a thing, then make sure that each of the rulers has two different reactions, right? One which reacts to like real abilities, for instance, taking a shot, and then a smaller one, which could be something along the lines of what the Chosens are doing, reducing willpower, uh, maybe applying a status effect or something. Basically, something that does not uh, result in you reflecting something back to them and being happy about uh, not taking damage but then taking a critical hit right afterwards uh, just because the reflection triggers a different reflection so that that thought uh, thought of game design does not uh, really resonate well with me a few more ideas and, and, and another thought and then i'm dropping the topic a few more ideas so number one um, I know in the earlier versions of uh, Better Advent, uh, the civilians and, and the resistance operatives uh, that in the terror missions also triggered the um, uh, the reaction shots of the rule uh, of the primes, and that led to a lot of backlash because you just couldn't really influence it. So that is a, another great example of uh, of how it should not have been designed, and it, I'm glad to see that they have taken that one out. Um, another idea would be simply an item, uh, a, re uh, a producible item, not, uh, not necessarily the frost bomb that can still be unique because it freezes it, but uh, simply an item that uh, disables the reactions of uh, the rulers, uh, of the prime, sorry. That in itself would block a slot, you do, uh, do it for one turn and then you uh, kind of uh, focus on it. I don't understand why you wouldn't put a counterplay ability in here. It just doesn't make any sense. 30 uh, heavy uh, fragments, however, make a lot of sense. That's good, very good uh, loot. And we got a, spe a specialist. Let's take a look here. We got Sane joining us. Welcome, buddy. Uh, we want... What? Comet Protocol or Haywire Protocol, what exactly is going on? It, what? That, that's not even a specialist. Multitasking, whenever you ate protocol, uh, whenever you ate protocol a target, you also ate protocol yourself. Hmm, not bad. Try to draw an enemy towards you, decrease defense by 30, increase dodge by 70. Yeah, I don't like taunting. I, I don't really know what that ability is supposed to do. Covert, no. Field medic, yes. Very successful overwatch shot. 50% uh, chance for another overwatch uh, shot. And precise shot is the alternative. I like the precision shot, to be honest. Guardian isn't bad either, but precision shot is good. Uh, with multitasking, though, having multiple overwatches isn't bad. Three mobility or ever vigilant. I like mobility. This here is like a free PCS, but ever vigilant is great as well. I think we're going for ever vigilant. Your shots ignore all defense from half cover. Oh, that's not bad. Restoration isn't bad either. And given how much damage we're taking, I think we're going for restoration here. Strange character class. Though. So some somehow the mod here seems to manipulate uh, the normal character classes. I'm not sure if that's how it's supposed to be and if my original characters just slipped through. I don't know. Um, I'll just leave it as is. Great. Good. Um, we have a new kernel. I'm not sure about the new character class. I do understand what the design is supposed to look like. But I'm not sure if it is really better, quote unquote. 
Okay, um, yeah, so the majority of all of our soldiers are currently either incapacitated in the sick bay or tired. So we're going back to what we can do best, building radio relays, trying to raise that income, and eventually soon invading the warlock. There's the rage suit. And we got experimental heavy weapons. Ooh, okay. So we're building another spark just for good measure. Experimental heavy weapons. We got a couple of cores, so might as well do one. Nice little shredder gun. Let's do another one. Not so nice. What else do we have? Prototype plasma weapon, don't need that. Okay. In terms of engineering, we've gotten a couple of those heavy those heavy fragments. Uh, if we were to upgrade this, 70 heavy fragments, okay. Yeah, I I guess. The heavy weapon would cost just as much, but we're getting there. We're eventually getting there. Hunter weapons currently, and then afterwards we're researching the actual beam weapons. Good. Starting to begin the training of its of his last ability. And that's not only an 80 income, but we also finally got the double agent, which is incredibly helpful for us. So, can't make any more contact at the, at the moment. Do have one more facility for the Avatar pro, uh, project. I wonder up here, uh, that would give us more breakthroughs. Hmm. Maybe. Question is, if we were, were to build a tower here, we could make contact over here more easily. And we would get machine learning on top of it. So that's not a bad idea. Continent bonuses here aren't that great greater resolve is good double agent is good the rest is mm, so and so okay no let's try to get some money and Avenger with that hopefully we can build another tower i think we need 350. Market is open. Uh, i guess we still need the components here Problem is we don't really have a lot of uh, things to sell. Not as much as to get to the 350. Yeah, towers get, uh, towers become highly expensive. We're missing nine weapon fragments. Okay, so Towers get, uh, become really expensive, which means we're just going to scan for Intel for now. We're getting an emergency signal from our people deployed with the resistance. I'll play that off screen, guys. Uh, not needed to uh, to go through a boring uh, mission. Let's fast forward that. Okay, and we are back. So, uh, we have successfully escaped uh, the attack of the Warlock, and we have now unlocked his stronghold, which is exactly what we wanted. Time for you to go down incredibly soon. In the meantime, let's sign a new covert ops uh, mission. So, Good news is the Reapers and the Templars do, as you can see, no longer have 
Um, well, apparently they still have soldier captured on some of them, but actually it shouldn't be because there is no more chosen on those missions. Okay. Anyways, so this one here would be great. Soldier captured high though. Um, but we can prevent it from happening. Okay, so nine uh, dodge. Who could use uh, that? I think Bay Cockbutt comes to mind immediately. Let's prevent him from being captured by putting Noxus in here. And we're putting another scientist on the case as well. So breakthrough through research is exactly what we need. More damage with the swords would be good. Uh, that one is also good. Yeah, ability points wouldn't be bad either. Resistance contacts would, wouldn't be bad either as well. There's a lot that we could uh, do, but I think the breakthrough research for now is by far the best one. So breakthrough research it is. Confirm and go. Okay, we are theoretically able to fight against the Warlock. Once we're ready, we will invade him. That's the last uh, stronghold. Yeah, and we should be fine. We should be able to, to deal with all of these guys. I'm more concerned about the Warlock, but then again, if you do have a Templar with a Mind Shield, the Warlock uh, doesn't really stand a chance. Let's continue with Intel. Got the Hunter weapons ready. I have made a number of interesting discoveries. That finally gives us a great sniper. In terms of further options, I would like to continue with beam weapons because if we now get more heavy fragments, those become a real upgrade option for us. And then we can always research a data pad for another 100, 100 intel. And that's the last training for our Psy operatives. More intel and eventually a supply drop. Message coming through, Commander. Putting it on screen. There we go. It was a successful month. Only one of uh, them is left over. I don't want to deal with the adventure assault, so we gotta deal with the, uh, with the warlock rather soon. Experimental ammunition uh, would be instantly created. Yeah. No, I think we're okay. 400 supplies, that's good. Let's take a look what our roster is going to look like. He will not invade us immediately, but we also shouldn't kind of test our luck here. Um, once the covert mission is done, Fake Hogbite is with us. And given that everybody here is in a decent state, Five more days until Knuckles is back. Might as well just scan for some faster recovery. That way Knuckles is back in four days. So where is the Templar HQ? Over here. Avenger plotting new course. And then we're going to invade the Warlock. Which would very much stabilize the campaign to be honest we can then start uh, doing the last mission okay oh yeah oh now i i know we trained a scout um, whatever that character class is going to be i should be more open-minded towards the new character class i'm sure the guy who has programmed it um, was trying his best.
and I should have had the um, resistance order that immediately brought him to sergeant rank instead of squatty. Well, my bad. I don't think that they will see much action for now anyways. Um, they are more like fillers in order to help us with um, with a dar uh, with covert ops missions. Spark is produced, so that would be another um, spark for us. Is there anything else we'd like to do here? I mean, we're missing the Illyrium crystals, right? So that's a problem. And that will be a problem for weapon upgrades as well. I could... Yeah, let's not waste any more cores. We only have three more left. I was thinking if we might get another... Um, another AP Some round. People are a little worse for wear after that last covert action. Oh, of course. Give them time to rest, they'll be fine. Fake Hogbite has uh, taken damage. Of all of the people, uh, he was the only one who should not have taken damage. Anyways, let's, we, I'll give it a look and see how long he will be out of commission. Superior PCS wouldn't be bad. We have zero of these. That's immediately going to make our life better. And one mobility is pretty good as well. Loot soldier bond um well soldier bonds could be helpful as well those are free free inspiration um, inspirations between the soldiers improve combat intelligence that one would be in interesting it would allow us to negate what he's doing but i instead would like to kill him so I guess the soldier bond is good, but the superior PCS is also good. So in terms of just going in, no, 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 we, we don't want to reassign because that messes up their training and I really don't want that to happen. So for the last mission, we're going to take one of these guys with us. We're going to take Mirror with us. Might as well give her more movement. Got an extra soldier here. That's where Maximilian Richter is coming, uh, is coming in. And we got a nice little mobility bonus. We don't need her. Mm. Then again... We're going, we're going for the warlock. Soon, I will be upon you, Commander, and we will be no refuge for you and your So wait, daughter. four more days, right? Okay, so those two come with us on in helping the war, uh, with the war, uh, defeating the warlock. The reaper is not. Might as well go and put the Reaper in here for now. Okay, fantastic. Four more days until we can invade the Warlock. I think you will find our results have exceeded. Beam cannons are finally done. And that would also give us the spark cannon. Reinforced heavy armor. That is good. That I think is uh, even applying to the sparks, if I'm not mistaken. It's definitely applying to the rage suit. So I, will make that I like that. Extra hit points are always good. Two more days on fake hogbite. Almost done. And we got a landed UFO. What's the status on fake hogbite? It's 
still two more days. Okay, I'll tell you what, we're going to do that normal mission uh, next. So we got a couple of people that we wanted to take uh, onto it as well. Uh, spark specialist, one psi operative, one ranger, uh, one templar, and eventually the marksman are the ones that we anyways want to take onto the mission against uh, against the chosen the rest is pretty much free for all so we can take the b team onto that landed ufo and that's going uh, that's what's going to happen in episode number nine thank you so much for watching if you enjoy the content so far and the saving your disaster campaigns including the hard battles leave a comment uh, and a like down below and once we're at it, please uh, tell me about your opinion of the rulers uh, of the Prime's reaction, actually, and how you would design it if you were the designer of the mod. Thank you, and see you soon. Bye-bye, guys.